Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our Home Buyers webinar. We look forward to giving you some awesome information tonight. And from here, Yasmin's going to take it away with our team. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Or if you're watching this on a replay, thank you for hitting that replay button. Um, I'm Yasmin Ansari, and I'm the team leader for the Yasmin Ansari group here in Austin, Texas. And I wanted to quickly introduce our wonderful team to you. We have myself, um, as well as Isabella, who is our lead buyer's agent. She's not able to join us today, so I will tell you a little bit about what her job entails. And we have Matea, who is our team coordinator, who keeps everything afloat. So um, Matea is going to jump on in and introduce a couple of additional members of our wonderful team. So we have Will, our local Austin, Texas lender here. Hello, everyone. My name is Will Gray, and I'm uh, your fearless uh, vice president of mortgage lending here with Guaranteed Rate Affinity. I've uh, been in business for almost 20 years, and I'm licensed here in the whole state of Texas. So uh, if you have any questions or any needs for financial uh, assistance with getting a house, I am the person to talk to. Welcome. We also have John Nunez with Home Check Inspection Group. He was unable to make it tonight, but his company covers all of Austin, Texas and the surrounding areas. Um, they work really hard to take care of their clients and we definitely recommend them. And then right. yes, oh, okay. um, So we're gonna jump into some quick market trends here in the Austin uh, area. As you can see, our median sales price is still holding strong and it's at about 439,000. Um, remember that both sellers and buyers are benefiting in this current market, which is a little bit different than what we saw in the last couple of years during the pandemic and immediately after. Um, what we have right now is definitely indicative of a healthy housing market. We're not breaking records every month, but we have some stability and that is that is more of a normal market compared to what we saw in the previous years. And then we have renting versus buying. Um, so if you're currently renting, you know, you're paying so towards someone else's mortgage, you're taking care of um, them financially, really, and you're not building your own equity. So that is something renting versus buying it's really important to invest in yourself and you know, not be paying other people's mortgages. And then Yasmin's gonna tell us a little bit about the transactions and the home buying process here. So if you're watching this, you probably have not purchased a home before or you just are wondering what the steps are to buy your next home. Maybe it's been a while since you did. You know, the first step really is finding a realtor that you trust, that you enjoy working with, because you're going to spend a lot of time with them. Um, and that's really the first step. Once we speak with you, we learn what your goals are, what you're looking for, and we help guide you through the entire process. Um, our team is a bit different because we are like a one-stop shop. We provide you with everything that you would need that you may have to um, look for on your own. If you didn't have them all in one place, we try to provide that to you and give you different options to help you have the smoothest transaction possible. So really, once we start and we, we get to know a little bit about what your goals are, we introduce you to our go-to lender, who is Will. He's done a phenomenal job for us. And, you know, he gets our clients pre-approvals as soon as they get him the information that he uh, needs. And that really is the first step, right? Because the pre-approval is going to let us know exactly what uh, your budget is, right? We can think that we have a certain budget or we want to purchase a certain price point home, but it's not until that pre-approval um, is in our hands that we can go and make offers to show you know, how strong our offer is because we have um, a buyer who is able to, to buy it. And so um, you know, once we have that pre-approval letter, that's when we get going. That's when we start going out and looking at homes and, and seeing what you like, what you don't like, um, you know, what are your needs, what are your wants, 
um, until you find something that you really love. And then we talk about it. Um, we talk about what price point we're looking at, perhaps things that we would want to negotiate in the offer. And that's, again, where we as the realtors come in to help guide you through that. Again, we're dealing with a different market now than a couple of years ago, right? A couple of years ago, there basically was no negotiating for the buyers. And a lot of people were waiving inspections and overbidding and just trying to get a home at any cost. And so we're looking at a very different situation now where we do have the ability to negotiate a little bit. And we actually have the ability to even look at homes and take a little bit of time to see which one we like more or we don't like. Um, and this is all very different than what we saw in the last couple of years. So once we negotiate the offer, the realtors will write the contract um, and, and you would sign it, of course. Once it is accepted, we then have a time period with which we can do inspections. We 100% of the time recommend for you to conduct inspections. So that's where you hire an inspector. Um, our go-to inspector is John. He does a great job. Um you know, and that's something that you pay for as the buyer because you're having them look into that property that you're going to invest in um, to see if there are any potential hazards or issues. Now, there's a couple of things. Once we get that inspection report, we can then go back to the seller and possibly nego negotiate some of those items. So in addition to you having security with what you're about to purchase, it's also another tool we can use to further negotiate even once we're in contract stage already. Um, after that, again, that usually we need at least 30 to 45 days, depending on your situation, for a lender to go through their process, their underwriting process of really going through and, you know, checking out your income, your credit, all of the things that they look for. Um, they will order, the bank will order an appraisal. Um, an appraisal is different than an inspection, right? An inspection is something that you as the buyer are paying another company to do, um, to check out the home basically on your behalf. And the appraisal is basically when someone from the bank comes out and values the home that you're about to buy. Uh, their main reason for doing that is they want to make sure that when they're lending you the money, they're lending you a fair amount of money for what that property is worth. And so that's their assessment. That is another point, again, in time where we can possibly negotiate. If, if the house doesn't appraise for what the bank says it appraises for, we can possibly then go back and negotiate again with the seller, or we may have to come out of pocket more money to cover that difference. Um, we continue the process. We get our final loan approval from our lender. And then there's just a lot of paperwork that you're going to review. Um, we will always look through that prior to closing. You can always ask your lender those questions as well. Um, there's a lot of, as you can see, I'm going through it pretty fast, but there are a lot of different steps involved. And, and that's why it's so important that whenever you select a realtor, you know, it's not as simple as just signing a sheet of paper or going with your friend to go look at a few houses. There are a lot of details involved in this process. And you really want to go with someone that you trust, that understands the market, understands what they're doing and can guide you um, towards a successful closing. So that in a nutshell is, is the home buying process. So working with a buyer's agent is completely free to you. Um, your buyer's agent has your best interests in mind. They're going to take care of all your needs. They're going to help you understand the market. They can recommend industry pros like a great lender, a great inspector, um, all of those types of things that you may not know about. And they'll also be your personal negotiator to get you the best deal and to work with you throughout the process. So let's talk about the steps in the mortgage process. We've got five different steps. We've kind of made it uh, pretty simple to understand. It's, uh, we don't want to get too much into the weeds. We want you to have a good understanding of those steps. First is uh, the loan application. Uh, we require you to uh, fill out a loan application. Uh, you're going to provide information about your income, your, your employment, your debts, your assets, and also the per property that you're you're wanting to pr purchase. The second part of that is from that information that we gather, 
we're going to try to work towards getting that pre-approval. You heard Yasmin talk about that before, before she goes out and puts an offer on a home. Um, this step, basically, we verify, we uh, analyze all the information as far as income, your debts, employment, and assets, and then we come up with a, a, an affordable monthly payment based on the purchase price or down payment that you're putting down. Thirdly, after you get that pre-approval, now you're going to be able to go out and house hunt. That's the exciting thing there. You're going to be able to um, put offers in based on your budget, based on the information that you provided to us and your pre-approval. You want to be able to do that with confidence and also provide confidence to your seller uh, as well to, for them to accept your offer because you went through the process of getting pre-approved. Now, once you get that offer accepted, now it's time to get the your contract or get your contract and trying to get that into processing and underwriting. And now this step involves us verifying your information uh, a little bit deeper, uh, checking your credit score, which that is obviously done in the application process there, but we want to make sure of that as well. Uh, and then the decision is made uh, whether the loan is approved or not. Most of the time, uh, I would say probably 98% of the time, if you've done your due diligence up front, it's a pretty smooth process. And then the final step is closing. Um, this, this final step in the mortgage process involves, you know, signing all the necessary documents, uh, all the um, closing costs um, will be paid at closing, uh, usually at the title company or wherever you, there is a, um, uh, an agreed place. Um, once that paperwork is signed, um, funds will be dispersed and you basically become a proud homeowner or a new homeowner. Either way, you're proud. <laughs> so what documents are needed? So depending on the borrower's situation, um, this particular list is based on if you're a W-2 employee, use this pretty simple, 30 days pay stubs, last two years W-2s, government ID, usually your whatever government ID you have, uh, two most recent checking, savings, uh, consecutive account statements, or if you use utilizing investment, those accounts or those statements, or if you're using your retirement, those statements, now, also, depending on the borrower situation, um, if you're self-employed, um, we're going to need some different type of documents. Uh, maybe you're 1099. Uh, maybe you, you've been in business for a while uh, based on, you know, maybe it's a corporate or C-Corp or something like that. You may need business federal tax returns. And those are usually the most recent two years of the filing. Um, you also need your personal taxes for the last two years. Uh, maybe a schedule or a schedule K-1 of certain types of business. Um, also, you'll need your government ID. And again, like I said before, with the W-2, you're going to need your checking and savings or whatever you're utilizing to uh, finance the transaction. So what types of loans are there? So you've got the conventional you got FHA, you got VA, you got USDA, and there's other types of loans out there, but it's all dependent on your situation, you know, because not one size fits all. Um, as you can see through the bullet points there, we've got di many different programs out there for uh, many people's different needs, uh, like the area median income program. That's great for first time home buyers. You know, if you want questions, if you have questions about that, reach out to me. A little bit later uh, about that. So you may have heard of broker or home equity lines of credit. Um, this is usually from someone who's already owned the home, but you can utilize the equity in your home. Uh, builder loans, new construction, community lending programs. Those are usually, um, you may have down payment assistance, that type of thing. Uh, your Fannie Mae, Refi Now, you know, things like that. Um, as you can see there, you can read, read that as fast uh, quicker than I can read off here. So
So let's talk about understanding your credit score. So credit is obviously the driver of this because if your credit is not what, what it is cracked up to be, it's going to be hard to get uh, someone to lend you money. So when we talk about here, when we talk about credit scores, they're required. They're required on most loans purchased or securitized by Fannie Mae. The classic FICO credit score is produced from software developed by the Fair Isaac FICO Corporation. FICO credit score is produced from software developed by the Fair Isaac Corporation. And is available from the three and is available from major, the three major credit repositories. Credit repositories. Fannie Mae requires a following version of the classic FICO score for both DU and manually underwritten mortgage loans. So those repositories are, as you see there, you got Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. I'm sure you've heard of those before. Now, every lender, when we pull your credit, we require those three, those three repositories reflect uh, for your credit score. So you'll have three different credit scores. And what we do is we qualify you based off your middle score. So you have a high score, a low score, and a middle score and we qualify you based off your middle score. If you have two people on the loan, then we have to qualify you based off of the lowest of the two middle scores on that. Uh, there's a note, credit report will indicate if a credit score could not be produced due to insufficient credit. I've seen that multiple times. We have to go through a little process to try to develop that and, and get that because we will not... Um, lend you funds without a, a, a um, proper credit score. Now, there's our, there are ways we can do that, get around that, but we'd love that we prefer it showing up every, with a credit report with the uh, score showing. Sorry about that. Um, also, if you have a frozen credit score or anything like that, we'll have to go through the process of, you know, getting that um, frozen. So it's a lot of different things, but it's very important uh, to uh, be able to access that credit score and get a score to for us to lend to you. Um, as you see at the bottom there, just talk about DTI, uh, debt to income. That's one of the, the analysis that we do uh, when trying to qualify you for a specific price point or purchase price that you're looking for. Um, and that debt to in D DTI, or what we call a debt to income, is percentage of your monthly earnings used to pay off all debt obligations. Uh, we consider those, there's two ratios. Um, those are constructed in slightly different ways. The first one is called the front end ratio. You probably heard of that before or seen it. Um, this ratio is of the monthly housing expenses. So it's including the, your principal and interest property and ta property taxes and insurance compared to your gross monthly or pre-tax monthly income. The back end ratio is your other debts like your auto loans, your credit cards, or any other installment loans uh, that are figured in. And usually we take both in account and set an, a, an acceptable ratio, which might be expressed as a 28 36. So 28 front end, 36 back end. But we can discuss that more at a later time. Let's talk about down payment and closing costs. So down payments can be as low as 3% for qualified borrowers on primary residence. That's first time home buyers. Um, so that's a good thing. That brings everybody in, uh, in, into this game. Also for if you're trying to look for investment property, 20 to 25% for qualified borrowers on investment property. So that is the minimum. So what are acceptable down payment, uh, down payment sources? As you see there's bullet points there, personal savings and checking. Uh, you can use proceeds from the sale of your existing home if you have one, if you're looking to buy another one. Gifts and loans from friends or relatives. You can utilize down payment assistance programs as well as home equity or piggyback loans. 
And the last one is 401ks, stocks, bonds, IRAs, keel plans, and trust accounts. Down payment and closing costs. So what are closing costs? Well, here's what you're paying for in the closing costs. Usually the closing costs are insurance, property taxes, and professional fees. These are charged because those people are helping you <laughs> purchase the product uh, property and providing the paperwork to get in your home. So what are you paying for? You're usually paying for first year's home insurance, your title insurance, private mortgage insurance. That's if your down payment is less than 20% of the purchase price. Um, your first property tax bill, will, which usually covers the first six months that you'll be in a home. Fees for the appraisers, surveyors, and loan processors who work on your mortgage. If you opted to pay points in exchange for a lower interest rate, those costs will be collected at this time as well. So how much will your closing costs be? On an average, you should budget between 2 to 5% of the cost of your loan. So an example there, as you see, if you're applying for a $100,000 mortgage, you can expect about two to 5000 at closing. In most cases, you can find the exact amount of your closing costs in the loan estimate that your lender would provide to you. So how do you pay closing costs? Well, you can pay from your personal checking and savings like we talked about before, we're providing statements for that. Uh, if you're self-employed, you can also transfer money from your business account directly to escrow. You can roll it into your mortgage. Another method is to add the closing costs to your mortgage loan. You obviously have to talk to me about that or your lender about that as well, see if your loan qualifies for it. You can ask for a seller credit. Usually if you ask for that with, with conventional FHA, VA, and USDA loans, you can ask those seller to cover part of the closing costs using part of the money that they, you know, they're going to earn from the sale of their home. Now there are limits to that for each product. So obviously discuss that with your uh, lender. You can ask your family for gifts of funds, apply for government assistance programs, and then employ, employ, employee assistance programs at your job. A lot of people don't know that. Um, and then you, obviously, if you sell your personal property for, for funds, that can be applied. Do's versus don'ts. <laughs> I can't stress this enough. When you are in the process of trying to get financing and get pre-approval, or if you're in the process, it's in processing, it's going to be underwritten. Your file is going to be underwritten. Here are the dues. Save your money. <laughs> your finances will be checked multiple times during the process. Promptly provide all documents, all pages requested by me or your process. This basically speeds up the process. What I like to tell people is you are in the driver's seat. I am in the passenger seat. You're driving. I'm only here to guide you on that. We can't do anything with your loan unless you provide that information to us. We can't make it up. So the faster you go, the faster we can go. Respond to any requests for information from me as soon as possible. Continue to make all your payments on time. It doesn't mean to stop making payments. <laughs> Always continue to continue your payments. You also at that time could contact your insurance agent as early in the process and inform them of your new home and purchase. Uh, and be prepared to explain accounts for all non-payroll deposits into your bank accounts. Be prepared for that. So if you have anything that just all of a sudden deposits in there, you're going to have to explain that. So here's the don'ts. Do not apply for new credit of any kind or cosign on another person's loan. 
<laughs> don't make large deposits into your bank account. Your down payment should be seasoned, sitting in your account for at least two months. Don't charge a lot on your credit cards. Your credit will be checked again right before closing. Don't buy a new car. <laughs> Do not buy a new car. Don't spend your down payment. Don't buy furniture yet. Don't make big purchases while in the loan process. And don't quit your job or change jobs that could affect your employment or income. Now, I laugh a little bit about this, but it happens. It happens out there. And you don't want your process to come to a big stall because we have timelines to hit. So please adhere to do's versus don'ts. Now, this next one here is inspections versus appraisals. Inspections checks for health and safety issues. Um, neutral third party hired by the buyer. So buyer, you're going to hire them. Uh, you're going to ask for repairs and it's to know the condition of the property you are invested in. So when you're doing that, you want to make sure that that property is up to code, it's up to the proper standards. And usually with inspections, they'll usually advise and suggest repairs. Now, those people that we're going to, what we're talking about inspections and appraisals, appraisers, they're trained. They're trained on what they're, what to look for. Okay. So let's look at appraisals. Appraisals do the same thing. It checks for health and safety issues. It's a neutral third party working for on behalf of the lender. That's then we have establishes the value and then may require repairs before uh, we will lend. So you'd want to have, you'd like to have that as a, as is appraisal. Um, with that, it can help, you know, identify potential major items for you because remember you're trying to purchase this home. You want to know what, everything that's going on. Um, and it's a great investment for the amount you're paying for a home. Um, and with what those inspections, inspectors or appraisals, what they find, it pays for itself. And you can usually negotiate that price to cover that. So, and that would be something that Yasmin or Isabella would be doing at that time. And next, we're going to talk about homeowners insurance versus home warranty. So homeowners insurance covers the loss and damage to your home structure and your personal belongings. This could be caused by things such as a fire, wind, floods, theft, etc. You can actually set this up to cover everything um, of value in your home and you can change how much the value is there as well. A home warranty is a service contract that helps reduce the cost of home systems and appliances caused by normal wear and tear. This is going to cover items such as kitchen appliances, your HVAC system, plumbing, etc. cetera. Um, when you're buying a new home, you know, you never know what's going to happen. So it's really good to have homeowner's insurance and a home warranty so that you're covered. And all you have to do is pay a quick copay and you're ready to go. Next, we have wants versus needs. So, of course, you know, you may want a beautiful, like, big walk-in closet or, like, a huge garage, but you really got to break down when you have a budget and just talk about, like, what do I really need? Oh, I need three bedrooms. I don't need five bedrooms. Um, you know, maybe I only need a three-car garage or an office space. So, really, you know, coming down to the nitty-gritty and talking with your realtor about what your needs are versus what your wants are, are really important so that we can find the home that you love. So with the final walkthrough and the closing on your home, um, you guys have gotten so much information from Will. So I'm gonna make this part kind of short and sweet. 
But you see there's a lot of steps involved in the closing of your home. We're always going to conduct a final walkthrough so that we can make sure that what we saw a month ago when we first saw the home is still there. Um, you know, once all of the contents are out of the home, a lot of times you might catch things that were not clear to see when we walked through the home initially and maybe it was furnished. And so this is another opportunity for you to take one last look, make sure everything is the way that you expected it to be prior to closing. This is another opportunity where if we see something we don't like, as realtors, we will speak to the other end on your behalf and say, well, we need this and this fixed prior to closing. We're not going to close until this happens. Um, we, uh, you know, we would go there with you to go through a checklist. Basically, we sign off that checklist um, and, you know, go through anything that needs to be fixed um, prior to the closing you are supposed to get your closing disclosure from your lender or title company three days before, okay? So that gives you enough time to review everything uh, in detail so you're not at the closing table for hours reading everything. You're prepared ahead of time. If there's anything that you see that is off, that gives, again, an opportunity to ask the title company to correct it. Um, and all of these things are scheduled, right? They will then contact uh, myself and the buyer to coordinate a date and time that works for everyone to schedule closing. Um, again, the title company is the middleman. So the lender sends them all of the documents and then you sign those documents um, in front of a notary. Sometimes we can do a modal, mobile notary if we need to, um, or we can go meet at the title company's um, office or whichever location suits everybody, sign the documents. Um, and that's it. Every once the funds are transferred and received, you are closed. You get your keys. You have the recorded um, deed, and you are good to go. So that's pretty much how we wrap up the uh, closing process. So at this time, um, we wanted to see if anyone had any questions that we would be happy to address? Um, yeah, I actually had one question. So um, how would you say the market is right now at this current moment? Is that question for me, Matea? Yes. Well, you know, I do get that question a lot. Um, and I actually work in two very active competitive markets. I work in the Miami, Florida area, as well as the Austin, Texas area. And I will tell you that it is a different market compared to a year ago or even two years ago, but it is still a very active market. People are still buying, people are still selling. Um, buyers actually have a little bit more of the advantage now, whereas a couple years ago, people would probably say the sellers uh, you know, had the advantage. So I think it's a great time for buyers to look now because they can actually kind of go back to how it used to be where they can look at a few houses and really see as you were talking about what they want versus what they need and and location and schools and they can you know they don't have to be rushed into it a couple of years ago you guys have to remember people weren't getting that people were just kind of if they could grab a house they would just take it they didn't have time to negotiate they didn't have the ability to negotiate there was just so much competition right and they were overpaying $50,000, $100,000 for a house. Whereas now the prices have stabilized a bit and you actually have the power to negotiate a little bit, nothing too wild, but you can negotiate a little bit, right? So the tables have kind of turned, I think. Um, and sellers are still selling. Don't, don't get me wrong there. They're just not selling it for 100 over ask or 200 over ask, right? Um, so I think I personally think it's a little bit more of a fair uh, and normal market compared to what we saw in the last couple of years. So Yasmin, do you also, would you say that um, there's room for negotiations then on like how much room would you say? Like, could I basically tell someone, oh, they're selling this for 500,000. Can I buy it for 400,000? I love that question. Well, you know, that would be a perfect, a wonderful world if it were like that. But like I said, the markets that we are in, in Austin, Texas, and Miami, Florida, that's not what we're seeing, you know? So not to say that there is not any negotiation possible. I don't want to say that. We can always try, right? But this is not a desperate market, if you will. You know what I mean? So 
again, people want are actively moving here every single day. People want to be in these cities um, and people are buying. So again, we can, sure, there are different techniques. That's why you have realtors, guys. You can't do this alone. There's so much involved and this is why you need to have people on your side, in your corner that deal with this every day that know how to deal with these situations. There are a lot of different ways to negotiate. A lot of times people think it's just about the price point and it truly is not. There are a lot of other creative ways that you can negotiate a contract. So yes, Mateo, we, we definitely still can negotiate. It's not totally out at this point. Okay, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Will, could you tell me a little bit about the current um, rates right now and how the market is treating those new home buyers? I know a lot of people get worried when they see like this higher rate from a, you know, like what we were seeing a year or two ago. Well, yes, I sure can, Matea. Um, the rates are, you know, are usually high sixes at this moment. And um, the unfortunate thing for those who are waiting, uh, it's not going to get back to four or three percent. Um, those days are, are pretty much over unless, you know, we have a uh, an unexpected pandemic, um, which um, this has never been this way. The rates have never been this low. Um, this is probably the norm now. Uh, and also, if you're waiting, uh, you shouldn't. Uh, because it's so volatile, the rates are, you know, they're, they're trending upwards. Um, the best time to buy is now uh, to get a, a take advantage of the rates right now. Um, also, we have a program out there that, you know, we call it the two-in-one temporary buy-down, which could actually temporarily buy that rate down for you uh, with seller contribution um, that you can take advantage of, you know, those uh, low rate right off the bat. Um, to save you a little bit of money, but also get you into that home as quickly as possible um, if that rate is a pain point for you. Awesome. Thank you so much for that information. And we want to thank everyone here that joined us and watched and is still here um, for joining us. If you have any more questions, we would love to answer them. So please feel free to reach out to us. Um, and also follow us on social media. We always come out with some great content that I know will help an array of buyers and sellers. So definitely follow us and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Will and Matea for moderating. You guys have been awesome. Um, like I said, we are happy to help you. Um, we have the full team ready to go. We know what we're doing. Let us, if you're skeptical about the market, let us take you out one day. Let us show you what is out there and the possibilities because we may just surprise you. So thank you all for joining. Thank you, Will and Matea. Thank you all. Have a great night.